Can you guys hear me at all? Looks like you guys can hear me. Yeah, beautiful. Sweet. All right, now we're sorted. Hello, everyone. I, yeah. I just saw that first wicket just as I hit go live. God damn it. G'day, Rogue Riot. G'day, AFL Time 23. G'day, 10 viewers. Welcome. Oh, what a start, eh? It is 8.15 here in England. The sun has not come up. Bullshit. I also started walking down the street um, in the six degree weather, which is actually a warm day for here to go get my morning coffee. And I was walking down and I was like, dit, 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 dit. and I was happy to go get my coffee. And then I remembered it's Sunday and nothing's open here. And I just, um, <laughs> when I realized it was Sunday, I just stopped there and I just stood in the street and I didn't have the heart to turn around yet. I needed to stand there and wallow in how disappointed I was I can't have a coffee this morning but yes hello Cameron says fixed ring silly here Sunday night in Geelong no one's gonna want to go yeah that's a good point yeah what's the time now it's like 7.20 Sunday night yeah it's kind of just like being an Eagles fan though <laughs> all our games are at Sunday night alright hard is at the crease with Connolly the hero from last year that should be paid wide Good start here for the Gades. Max in the chat again with some predictions. I hope I'm not just uh, delayed here on KO. That's not the live score. G'day, Joycey. Sasquatch Frio's in the chat. Oh my God. That was not out. That LBW wasn't out. <laughs> God damn it. Eskenazi. Silly boy. No, nah, it looked out, to be honest, as soon as I saw it. Oh, that ball was moving in the air. As soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, don't review that. But there you go, a bit of extra bounce. So, yeah, that, that ball is swinging through the air. It's been a good first over. Did Quinton de Kock play the, the first game? I feel like he didn't. Rogue, you'd be able to clarify that. Fifth ball of the innings. Oh my god, he is moving that ball through the air. This is Rogers bowling. Cameron reckons the Gades win. Yes. Yeah, I think it's fairly evenly matched on paper. Um... The Scorchers do have some top-end quality in here. Like, Inglis is playing Turner, um, Hardy. Like, that's pretty strong strong players in the top order. And then uh, Jai Richardson and is Berendorf playing? I think he is. I have it I have it over here. That's right. Oh, what an over. What an over. No runs off the bat. Um, I'm just trying to get the squads up here. The wicket's drenched, they reckon, eh? That sucks. Uh, yeah, okay, so we've got Richardson, Ty, McKenzie, and Berendorf. I don't know too much about McKenzie, to be honest. Inglis, Turner, Evans in the middle order. Eskenazi out for a duck is not ideal. Be nice to see Connolly. He hasn't faced a ball yet. The Prince of Perth cricket version has got this. Yeah, that's right. I thought this was Dukok's first game. Replace Dukok with Cox, so at least we have still... <laughs> I think Maddinson is a bit of a Kmart Freddie Mercury. Yeah, true. People said that about me while I had the moustache. Not to my face, but I saw the forums. I would have gone tonight, if not for conjunctivitis. Yeah, fair enough. That's rough. Rough like the family dog. Nick Madison is a game home cricketer, yeah. I can't say I followed his career closely, but I do remember he was a bit of a prospect, capable of playing for Australia one day. He probably has played for Australia, right? I just, uh, he was a bit taken a bit more seriously. Oh, 
Also, I got 25 in the chat, guys. Thank you for being here. If you could chuck a like on the stream, help out the algorithm a bit, that would be very handy. One for one off eight balls, still no runs off the bat, which is a, a little alarming. The ball is moving through the air, like I said. So hopefully that bodes well for Richardson and Berendorf later. <laughs> well played. It's more about the lifestyle. Shot. Well fielded though. Huntsy's in the chat. Welcome, mate. Good to see you. I suppose it's a bit late to ask people for their predictions. I suppose everyone's going to be slightly more slanted to the Renegades because the first 10 balls have been dominant. But uh, yeah, what's everyone's predictions? I had a, kind of a bad feeling about this game going into it, but I'm not, um, not the most switched on Scorchers fan. Just updating updating some settings here. <clears throat> I just messed with the bit rate a little bit there. I was getting a message. Okay, whip through. Backward point. <laughs> I hope you're right, Rogi. I hope you're right. So, drenched pitch is going to be interesting. I, uh, yeah, what exactly will that do, the pitch, if, it, if it's actually wet? Like, it'll impact bounce. And the, bounce but the ball's carrying pretty, through, uh, pretty well through to the keeper at this point. Let me know if the stream quality got better or worse then, or the same. Because I was getting a little message there. Oh, we could use a Cooper Connolly innings here of, I don't know, 50. What a nothing comment. Jeez, yeah, this... Both opening bowlers. I didn't even pay attention to who the second bowler was there, but it was um, Rogers, the first one. And Siddle, of course, yeah. But uh, they're bowling pretty well. Second run off the bat. Was that the first run off the bat? No, second. The score just hasn't updated. Come on, Hardy. One for three off 2.1 is a little bit dire. Oh, another good delivery. Very hard for the batsman at the moment. The Strikers versus Heat game was amazing. Yeah. Real wet affair. <laughs> G'day, Lily. How you doing? Good to have you. I predicted... Did I predict the Renegades to come second this year? Which is not... Um, nothing special. And what I mean by that is um, my predictions are not that important because I don't follow it that closely, but... <laughs> hey, Graz. <laughs> What do you think of Mitchell Johnson's comments for David Warner? I'm not going to lie. I've kind of missed those a little bit. He, he say something about him not being able to... He shouldn't be in the team. I've kind of forgotten. Oh, Hardy's gone large. 
out of nowhere. A couple of bounces for a four. Ooh, we got ourselves a Studi raid. <laughs> what does it mean? David Warner has opened up on Mitchell Johnson's criticism of his retired plans. Okay, now let's find another article. Jeez, one for seven off 2.5. I suppose we should be patient. Uh, okay, I see what Johnson's saying here. He, he says, why does a struggling test opener get to nominate his own retirement date? Hmm. It does seem a little bit harsh. <laughs> he obviously didn't like him. Jasmine Jones, I presume you mean Jermaine Jones, gets a full season of halfback. He could be all Australian quality. Completely destroyed the Giants last year. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know about all Australian quality. That's a competitive position there. Um, but he is he's pretty damn good, I think. And I think he, he stands out and gives us something that we don't have with some running carry. Um, and aggressive ball use. He makes mistakes, but I think considering how stagnant we were in 21 and 22, I think we can tolerate that. And, you know, I like his versatility as well because uh, at the start of last year, he actually played forward in a game and kicked two goals and then we moved him back and then he played well there too. When's the Pies vids coming out, Jesse? I've got to know when I need to write a paragraph. <laughs> Tearing me up. Uh, so the answer to that is actually tomorrow. I pushed it back a day. I've got Collingwood and Carlton coming out tomorrow. Um, I am undecided whether I push Carlton back a day after that and just do one a day. Um, I guess it depends if I get any other any other videos done after this, which I hope to do. I hope to do. Um, I got to figure it out. I need some ideas for stuff to do after this best twenty two series. I'm thinking like a twenty two under twenty two maybe. Um, I think was it Fox or no Sen? I think Sen did a video on. Um, on every team's young core. I was thinking about maybe doing my own version of that, but different. G'day, Daniel. Thanks for being here, mate. One for eight off 3.2. So four balls left in the uh, power play, if it's even called it that. No, what's it called now? Um, you guys told me the other day. The hustle. I don't know. Some some random noun. It's funny that Hawthorne com commented on my Hawthorne video. I haven't. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I do not. Just to clarify, for legal reasons. Oh, thick edge gone. Was that through first slip? Or like over first slip, or like in between first slip and wicket keeper. Obviously feeling the pressure a little bit. Yeah, it was kind of over. know what a raid is is it when everyone just comes in and says hello <laughs> oh, no not the hello bandits well, hello everyone that was a much needed boundary it didn't happen in convincing fashion but hardy has 10 runs off the bat now which is good
got to finish. So one for 13 off the um, the Bamboozler or whatever the power play is called. Bamboozler was be a good name. Oh, my legs and glutes are sore. I trained legs the other day. Oh, he called it the power play. A raid is when someone else ends their stream and they're, ah, okay, so it can be a positive thing. It's kind of implied that it's a bad thing. So I was like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. Okay, thanks, brought by footy and rogue right. Hello, everyone. All right, Sutherland. He had a pretty good game in the first game against the Sixers. I was kind of half watching that. We made 50, right? Uh, I can't remember how we bowled. Oof. Quick single. Who's next in? Is it... Uh, it's Inglis, I think. He does look like his dad. Sutherland. Just a blonde version. It wasn't that long ago he was in the draft. Or like, he was talked about as an AFO draft prospect. Like I lost track of how old he is. That's probably like five years ago, maybe. Little Sutherland. Nightmare rated him as a first round draft prospect. Yeah, true, Rogi. I mean, I had no idea what to expect. I knew he was a good footballer. Um, oh, shot. Connolly's flicked that through. Pine square on the legs side. That was a good shot. Four runs. Um, oh, you're right, boys. That's okay. <laughs> no, no it, you didn't look bad. I just didn't really understand what was happening. I'm an old man. Good to have you, mate. Um... Was James Sutherland a cricketer? Like, I know he was, what was he, CEO of Cricket Australia? But, like, did he, did he play many for cricket? Oh, Connolly's gone. No footwork there, unfortunately. Got caught on the crease. Prince of Perth is gone. That's not Harley Reid, bro. Nah, we're having fun. Yeah, right, Rogi. Yeah, I mean, like we've seen some genuine success with the cat cat B system, like players who are not registered for three years signing and, and becoming decent players like James O'Donnell. Um, then there's others that escape me right now because I'm a little sleepy. But um, yeah, I mean, when you look at that model, Sutherland does look like someone who could do that when he um, he used to play football I wonder if he went as far as playing for Vic Metro probably not English to the crease is probably what we needed strike rate of 143 is very healthy yeah he did hit 100 the other day against India in the T20 and he looks tiny Oh, up his drive, over point. A little bit lucky. Nathan Murphy was a decent cricketer. Yeah, I vaguely remember hearing that. Demetia, right, as well. Um, Canelio. Adam Carter, he used to play for the Eagles. I think, I think I could be making that one up. No, I think he was a good cricketer. Jordan Clark, as well. Jordan Clark played for like a straight under 16s or something. Took a hat trick or something. Oh, these are tough batting conditions. Our bowlers are gonna have a 
they were cut out if we don't put off a good total. Yeah, right, Cameron. I didn't didn't realise that. I knew he made Vic Metro. Okay, there you go. I couldn't remember exactly how far into his football sort of career he got. But I feel like within his draft year, he was still playing football. These damn multi-talented kids making me look bad. False football says I hate this. Wait. False football. Are you my enemy? Are you my rival? <laughs> Alex Keith, favourite stars player. Yeah, I was saying the other day, I always get Alex Keith and Alex Carey mixed up because both played at footy and cricket. They both have played in the VF, sorry, in the BBL. And both kind of, well, I think Alex Carey, didn't he play like the year before GWS's inception? He never actually played AFL, but he was like, wasn't he their inaugural captain? Like he was their first captain before like they actually got their playing list together, I think. Another multi-talented guy. Tries a reverse sweep there. 11 off 16 as Majib is into the attack. This is not looking so good. Unfortunately, the ones we do actually hit, even if not well, they're all going straight to the fieldsman. Hey, that was hit very well. Pretty close to the fielder, but four runs. Much needed boundary. You could use a couple more of those this over. I'm not tired. You're tired. Yeah, it was a little bit of a risky shot. Oh, well, good flight there from Ajib. Didn't quite read that. Got nowhere near it. Why don't you watch the hundred or something? I've never actually watched the hundred before. I kind of find it silly to have one hundred balls. Like, just this part of me just wants to keep it to overs, make it simple. Well, it's not that it's not simple. It's just like. 2020 is good enough, surely. Like, I, I wonder what decision making went into it. They're like, mm, 20 balls too long still. I mean, to be fair, like, I think 2020 is probably, like, these streams go for like three and a half hours. Um, more, yeah, I think so. Maybe they only go for three hours, actually. When you compare it to f football over here, it's like two hours. suppose when the game goes for four hours, it's hard to put it in prime time. Because if it starts at like seven, it'll go to like 11. Which to us Perth people seems late. Oh, Joel Selwood's there. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> The cousin things means that they're also lovers. Wait, I could have made that joke better, but I'm tired. I don't know why I'm so tired. I slept, I slept okay. Probably because I made 19 videos in a week. That was, uh, that ended up being a pretty good over. Hardy managed two boundaries off Majib. Which is highly necessary. Two for twenty-eight off six is not good. I wonder what a pass score here is, though. Mm. 
Inside edge goes for a single. Two for 29 off 6.1. Jeez, Finch is a big boy. It's funny because, like, facially, he still looks, like, quite lean. Like, and then you look at his body and you're like, wow, there's a lot of you, respectfully. Quite interesting dimensions to him. But you know how you can see in somebody's face, like, how much body fat they usually have? With Finch, it's misleading. Oh, there's a South Africa India T20 today as well. Oh, beaten on the inside. Yeah, as Finch is saying, like, it's hard to forecast what's a good score here because the ball is zipping around right now. And the pitch is doing plenty. Which gives me some hope. Oh, what a delivery. And I think that was actually nicked. Tough take there. Yeah, drop catch for sure. <laughs> Everyone has a flaw in Aaron Finch's of being a Cats fan. That's true. No, I, I, I don't actually mind Geelong fans too much. There's, there's quite a few of them in Perth. Dylan was one. Oh, two for thirty off six point five. Oh, and my car crashed. Give me a sec. What do we reckon to par score, everyone in the chat? I honestly think like 130 is looking pretty good right now. <laughs> nah, maybe not. Maybe not par. Um, I don't know, but I think 140, 150, like in these conditions, would um, would actually give you a, a sniff. missed something they're talking about player welfare here are they coming off They're talking about a wet patch on the pitch that is dangerous. Guys, yeah, they're concerned about the quality of the pitch because this is a wet patch that's making the bounce unusual. Are they walking off the field? Or are they just inspecting it? I So I, I missed the ball where... I missed the ball where this obviously sparks some intrigue.
Yeah, they're considering how safe it is to play on this pitch with the bounce. God, imagine that. Like, imagine if they don't go through with this game. <laughs> Won't be a good look. Especially after the, the, yesterday's washout. Yeah, good point, Jacob. Yeah, as soon as you wait for someone to get hit, it's probably a bit late. What's happened here? Oh, fuck me, KO. Sorry, my language. But it just died as soon as I... Yeah, this is an unplayable pitch. <laughs> when you think about... When you watch the ball delivery after delivery, the ball is seeming like crazy. Okay, so English was complaining. Well, I think he said it's a joke. I think he's just frustrated. <laughs> if the game's over, then can't wait for Jess, the next hour of Jesse's ASMR stream. Yeah, it's just been lightly chewing on some crisps. This is quite fascinating. Yeah, to be fair, facing Will Sutherland on this pitch would be a little bit daunting. Quinton de Cox's face as well, I think, demonstrates a lot. He, oh, fuck me, KO. Let's just start again. Um, but he's looking at it. <laughs> he's just looking concerned. He's probably thinking, God, I can't wait to not... Well, I, I, uh, I'm not looking forward to batting on that. Not only can they not finish this, this stadium, they can't build a pitch or make a pitch, yeah. This is interesting. So some officials walking off, the players are all still waiting around. <laughs> I think... New Fair English, I think, is more frustrated because he was swinging and missing rather than his safety. So they're genuinely concerned. I think at this stage, honestly, it doesn't look good. If they're getting to this stage, there's been that much of a delay. I think feel like it's unlikely that they're going to go back on. It's funny though, like, obviously from ball one, I was like, wow, this ball's moving around. So, I mean, there's two different factors happening there. They are just genuinely moving the ball around in swinging conditions. But when you watch, and I was only kind of half paying attention, but when you watch, like, six like replays in a row of the ball bouncing and skidding um it is pretty alarming see i, I love treacherous batting conditions obviously not at the expense of safety just ball 33 overs of spin yeah See, I would love that. I would love to watch them play in treacherous conditions, but again, not because of safety. I'd rather, I'd rather just watch it be very, very hard to bat. Um, if there was a way to do that in which, like, there was no risk of danger. Like, things have changed. I remember reading about this famous test in the 90s in the West Indies where um, 
the pitch was more fucked than that. Like there was, I think there was a bouncer, like a, or like a, a pitch, a ball that was pitched like halfway down the pitch that skidded and hit like the bottom of middle stump, but like without bouncing more than once. It just went boom, boom. And, um, and it was like Kurtley Ambrose and Courtney Walsh were just bowling at the body. And it just sounded like a war. Was, I think I read about this in Steve War's autobiography. And he made 64 that day. And I'm not too sure who worked this out, but some algorithm calculated that... I think it might have been in the player ratings. They uh, um, worked out that that 64 was worth 203 on a normal pitch. <laughs> I'm not saying that we should be, um, we should have pitches like that anymore, but, um, I do like, I do like a bit more of a, uh, bat on ball, ball, ball on bat dominance every now and then. God, that sounded gross. Ball landed on a good length and was a bounce of height after going past Inglis. Yeah, fair point. Gilly thinks it's not fit for play. I feel legend says pitch is doing a bit. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> there was a pitch where a full delivery bounced over the keeper. Yeah. That rings a bell too. I'm not sure where I saw that. That's crazy. Kind of a shame because the, the morbid curiosity part of me wants to see it unfold. But like I said, I think if it's gotten to this point, um, I, don't, I don't see the backflip coming here. I think this game's over, which sucks. Chill out, mate. Think of something other than balls. <laughs> no, I miss Manscaped. It was a perfect channel for me to uh, um, channel this ball energy. <laughs> On the plus side, Brogy, if this game gets called off and this stream doesn't go too much longer, then I will probably just upload my Collingwood video. Maybe. What time is it over there? Yeah, why not? If you could do me a favour and like the stream while you're here, guys. <laughs> Yeah, part of me wants to see a play and then the other part of me is like, that's because I don't have to face Will Sutherland. <laughs> He's a very tall man. How old is, how tall is Sutherland? He's at probably about 6'6". Six, six, maybe. Will Sutherland. Can't imagine going to this game and it's over in six overs and the weather's perfect. <laughs> oh, Rogi. Southern wants to keep bowling a few overs. Wow. Yeah, three ball comparison there, as Jacob points out, was pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, right. So Sutherland was saying that he was using the same grip for pretty much every ball. A quarter seam. I don't even know what a quarter seam is, but apparently a half, halfway between a... I've never heard that term before. Um, but he said he was bowling the same um, 
like grip position, seam position, and the ball was varying in the way that it did. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Eskenazi's looking at the pitch too. Don't know if Connolly can um, blame the pitch for that one. Eskenazi's pissed. He still gets a duck on his record. <laughs> With Southern, it looks like he goes to school to steal people's lunch money. Yeah. Yeah, just wants to keep bowling and then the game gets called off. I like that. Sutherland reckons it won't go on. Fascinating T20 though, just pure chaos. <laughs> yeah, Sutherland's like, <laughs> I'll pull a couple more overs and then I don't want to bat. <laughs> That's fair. It must be fun bowling like that. Not because you're causing danger, but just because you you just see an absolute chaos and difficult. You're finding you're seeing batsmen find it impossible to play you. That would be fun. What are they even? Like, oh, they're the scorchers boys. They're not um, inspectors. This would have been a good game too, which is a shame. Like I, I, not that my predictions count for much, but I had these guys second and third. And to be fair, it is first versus third last year, right? Running games came third? Well, they come second. Third. Third. Sydney came second. Or Brisbane lost the final. some video ideas for actually uh, I will tell you guys one that I'm working on at the moment and it's um oh match referees out um yeah I've been working on one in the background and it's what the waffle would look like if the AFL if the VFL never became the AFL and um basically I've just plot all the West Australian players from the AFL into the original Waffle Clubs and try and sort of like imagine what that Waffle League would look like if it was still the biggest league in WA. Like when, when my dad was growing up, the Waffle was like, they were like celebrities almost. Ben asks, who do I have at first? I mean, not that it counts much, but I had the Sydney Sixers winning this year's. But, I mean, so far, so good. They won the first game by six runs, right? Um, but I don't really know, to be honest. T20 is very hard to predict. But generally, you get a feel, generally speaking, the best teams do the best. But, um, but also, like, with the squad changes and different international players and availabilities like it gets tricky but I think I've, I concluded that Sydney have the, the strongest or well, one of the stronger lineups and uh, weren't hit too hard by availability funny how Port want to leave the sand for say goodbye to the Magpies name then oh good point I didn't think about that yeah yeah I wonder how that would work they'd need to almost like, I think we're going to have a National Reserves Comp eventually. This is probably just the start of that. It's literally just the VFL expanding to the AFL again. When you think about it. Well, I want, I'd actually haven't looked this that much into this topic, to be honest. But I, I, don't, I want to know what the chief reasons for that are. Because surely the Sandfall's not a bad place for their reserves to play. And as for the Waffle Eagles, like... 
we've just been we've had no plays in it for two years. Like it's just been like four four plays a week, two cat B rookies, and then like Zane Drew playing in our waffles, waffle team, um, playing in our waffles. Um, so I don't see why we really have a push to leave. There's nothing wrong with the league itself. Might as well just wait until we can actually launch the reserves competition. But I have EFL expanding. You know what that means. Vic bias. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not one of those Vic bias noobs. But what I will say is that I do think it does exist to some extent, um, which surprised me. I actually didn't think that was true until I went to Melbourne for the grand final in 2018, and I, I remember having multiple conversations with people who were like, obviously Victorians, and they were like talking about. You know, who are you going for the grand final? And they're like, oh, I hate Collingwood. This was a Victorian person. I hate Collingwood. You're like, you can't. I'd hate to see them win. They suck. And then I think I said, so are oh, you going for the Eagles? And they'll be like, oh, God, no. No, no, got to go for the Victorian team. <laughs> I was like, what? That wasn't just one person either. Like a lot of people hate West Coast, uh, particularly around that time. Um, and yeah, I think that person who said that one was a Hawks supporter. So I do think there is a bit of a like um, a Vic supremacy, if that's the word, but not 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 in a bad way. It's just an interesting observation. Um, we, yeah, in WA, you'd, uh, it's not true. You'd um, you'd get those fans who do support both West Coast and Fremantle. They're probably nice. They're probably like just like I just want everyone to have fun. Those kind of types, not like real fans. Um, they do exist, real fans that go for both, but they're a pretty small minority. You grew to not hate West Coast. I, I wonder what the, exactly the perception is of West Coast uh, and why they are disliked. I mean, surely part of it is... Well, there's no doubt, like, the, the more successful you are, the more hateable you are. And we are pretty successful. Um, and by contrast, Fremantle fans... Sorry, Fremantle probably gets a lot more neutrals because they want to see Fremantle succeed because it's not as usual. Historically, obviously. Obviously, right now, Fremantle's way better. Um, so there's a, like... There's a, yeah, if you... There's a lot of people that would prefer Fremantle as their West Australian club. I can only assume it's because they haven't won a flag yet. Um, yeah. Orange team. Waffle video sounds mad. You should do one with every Waffle team's best AFL player produced. That's a pretty good idea, actually. I, I need to just see how many views that would get, but I don't see why not. Actually, the only way to see how many views it get is to upload it. It's not a bad idea, though. Um... I could do a sand for one as well. Interesting. You think West Coast to you are kind of boring, very vanilla. Fair enough. Like as a brand or the team? I kind of get what you mean, but we've also had some of the most exciting players. Plenty of KFC buckets being thrown. <laughs> <Just crazy. laughs> He's a big boy. It is intriguing. Like you look at his face, and he looks like kind of like a rugged, chiselled man to some extent. Like he looks like he's in shape, and then it, the camera pans out, and you're like, "Whoa!" You look like you've been retired for a while. <laughs> I was supposed to do a podcast with Jerusy tomorrow. I just remembered that. I don't know if we he's still going to be up for it. I haven't spoken to him for a few days. I don't know. I'm 22. Didn't watch footy when you had Cousins and Co. Yeah, fair play. Oh, I mommy was thinking even just like Nat Nui for a start. Um, but he didn't... 
he didn't win a premiership, but I, I kind of get what you mean with the the actual premiership team itself. Maybe from an outsider looking in, it seems like a vanilla team. I don't know. I don't know. My brain wasn't operating on that. Um, yeah. I think the older generation probably hates West Coast because the team in the 90s was kind of a symbol of of being obviously the, f- the first successful non-Victorian team um, and there was a sense of ownership there with Victorians like not wanting to they're like oh god we just opened up our leagues our league to Western Australia and they've won a flag I can see why that team became hated but it kind of just carried through um, oh is the match officially called off I actually missed that <laughs> just chatting away about dumb stuff God, we're still two for 30. Yeah. I was looking at quick info. Match referees called the game off. They're putting it down to the rain. Yeah, actually, Adash makes a good point. Uh, Adash on quick info, sorry. <laughs> In the wrong mode. Uh, on an unplayable pitch, Hardy's 20 off 23 seems like a masterclass. That's a really good point. There's a couple of good reverse sweeps off a spinner. Yeah, interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. I would say West Coast is a missionary. Oh, please, Rogie. If you only knew, my friend. <laughs> wow, I'm a dick. Um... Yeah, I, I know what you mean, like, Maston, Gaff, Sheed. Like, there's a few vanilla types in that team, but then there's a few not. Um, but that, I was no, I was just curious to your perception and what other people's perception is. Like, then there was a whole drug saga where people started to hate us, particularly in the media. But I do wonder if that was just kind of people already hated West Coast and they decided to use that as an avenue to be righteous, self-righteous and be like... I think we got called an evil club by Robert Walls. He's always had a real problem with us. Yeah. But I suppose it's a byproduct of being good because if you if everyone likes you, you're probably irrelevant. <laughs> in, a, in a strictly football context. I mean, what I mean by that is like if nobody hates you, then you're probably irrelevant. That's probably That's probably what I would say. Well, that might um, that might do for the stream, I guess, guys, because the, the game is over. Um, and I, I could hang around for a little longer or I could uh, I could start working on the next video for you. So maybe the waffle stuff is good. Tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll still, I'll be on the stream and I'll drop the Collingwood video now. Hopefully it's not too late. It is quite late to be dropping a video in Melbourne, but later than I would like. I might have even liked West Coast if they didn't result in giving me a month-long depression in 2018. <laughs> oh, what month? Nah, nah, just kidding. I'm an Eagles fan, Frankfurt. Pies vid is back on the menu indeed. It is now up. So, on that note, guys, thank you. We got about an hour in. Why not? Um... At this stage, I'll probably do the next Scorchers game. While, while I still have you, I might um, just look at the fixture here and consider which game I might stream next. They could have played at Marvel. That's true. How often do they play in Geelong? They split, split it between Marvel and Geelong. I don't know. So fixtures, I'm not going to stream tomorrow. I might stream... I might stream Wednesday tentatively. As I said it, I feel like I have something on. No, I think that's Wednesday night. So I think I should be able to do Stars and Mel and Perth um, on Wednesday. I, I won't just do Scorchers games, but when there's one only two days away, that's probably about the, the amount of time I want in between streams anyway. Oh, there's a few Scorchers games coming up. So, cool. Thanks, Rogie. Thanks for being here, as usual. Um, yeah, like I said, guys, we'll probably be back in a few days. Otherwise, uh, there's still going to be content coming out. Um, could I do a video about this this game? Maybe. Maybe. That might be a good...
good idea. Try and get viral with my 100 view videos. That's the only Renegades game in Geelong, says Max. Okay, that's good to know. Um, not that it's a strictly Geelong issue, but yeah, it's just a bit unlucky by the sounds. But uh, yeah, cool guys. Thank you very much for being here. Um, if you could, uh, well, I'd say like the video. It probably doesn't really matter too much, but I appreciate you being here. Um, oh, because they shortened the tournament. Good point. All right, thank you very much. I'm going to go get a coffee and I'm going to get to work and I've just released my Collingwood video, so go enjoy. <laughs> but, uh, oh, there you go, Rogie. True. All right, well, thanks for being here, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.